All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from beautiful blue sky, San Diego. And today I am joined by Ken Unger, who is in Indianapolis. How are you doing, Ken? Good, John. How are you? Excellent, excellent. And Ken is... Uh, Ken is the president of Charge, a sponsorship marketing agency. So, so Ken, uh, we're going to talk today about supercharging your sales through using sponsorship. So uh, a lot of people out there probably have never really thought or considered using sponsorship. So let's just to start off a baseline question. Why should you consider a sponsorship? Sure. Great question. So a sponsorship is a relationship between two organizations where one organization pays for the right to speak to the other organization's audience. Mm -hmm. It's a really old technique. It's actually been around a couple thousand years. It was one of the first business techniques. So it survived the uh, test of time, so to speak. And uh, it's really effective when, when one organization can come in and have its audience ready to go built uh, as an automatic sales tool. So then, so uh, so why is it then? This is something that uh, a lot of companies probably, especially you maybe newer companies, would don't really consider. They, as you say, it's been around for a while, but you know they think, well, I've got all these other digital tools and digital media I can use. Like, why would I go the sponsorship route? I think two reasons. One is that a lot of businesses look at sponsorship in the big context, right? Mm -hmm. An Olympic sponsorship or an NFL or a Formula One sponsorship. So a lot of businesses think that that technique is unattainable for them. Mm -hmm. The other thing is it's a little bit old school in the sense that it's about relationships. Mm -hmm. So yes, digital is powerful and yes, tools of technology really help us talk to consumers better and more effectively. But in the essence, sponsorship is an old school tool where it's about relationships between two organizations and to an audience. And if you think about it, I mean, that's one of the things that we've heard more and more about over the last number of years is the craving for relationship and the fact that all these uh, technology and digital tools, when they're not when they're not used correctly, maybe they create barriers and kind of dehumanize the whole process and and people are looking more for for relationships now. Right, exactly because you know in the in the end it's about speaking to your audience, telling stories, making your brand more relatable and really attracting those opportunities and that that's really about one-on-one engagement and about creating compelling content. So there's none of that barrier creation and sponsorship. It's about bringing down barriers and creating relationships between organizations and audiences. So to your point, if a lot of people, when they think of, as you're correct, when they think of sponsorship, they think of putting their name on a stadium or formula with the side of a Formula One car. What are some other examples of more attainable types of sponsorship that people may be not aware of? Yeah, so it's totally scalable, right? So, like, let's take your uh, home base, for example, of San Diego. Mm -hmm. You certainly could sponsor, if you're Coca-Cola, if you're Bank of America, you could sponsor the Padres. You could also sponsor a not-for-profit in the community uh, and help them attain the goals that that they want to attain from a cause perspective. Uh, You can sponsor a museum. You can sponsor um, a music organization. You can sponsor your little league. So this is a totally scalable tool depending on where your audience is. And it really is about, as a business, who's your audience, who's your customer base? And then you match it up with the property that you want to be involved in a sponsorship with. So what are some examples of maybe companies, you don't have to name the companies, but uh, you know, companies of different types and sizes that you've worked with and the type of sponsorships have, have worked really well for them? Yeah, so there's a couple of examples. So let's take, for example, B2B or a business-to-business mm-hmm. relationship. Uh, that's an opportunity for a company selling um, something to another business to feature its product within the action. So, for example, I once uh, worked with an aerospace company that sold uh, commercial, or I'm sorry, private jets. Right. Uh, and they were involved in auto racing. So they had the opportunity to speak directly to race car drivers and race team owners and those who are in the uh, private jet market. And really kind of get them in a closed environment, be a sponsor, be a part of the action. And as a result of that, uh, this particular company earned a 32 to 1 uh, return on investment. Uh For every dollar they invested in sponsorship, they got $32 back in revenue. Mm -hmm. 
the, from a B2C perspective, if you're talking to consumers, you have the opportunity to polish your image. So again, if I'll take another example from sports. If you are a, a fan of a certain sport and this company, which is selling something to consumers, were to sponsor that sport, there's something called image transfer, which right. means if, if a fan loves that sport, they're going to love the sponsor of that sport because of their engagement in the activity they love so much. And again, the return on investment depends on, did you pick the right sponsorship? Did you invest in the relationship? All those things, but um, the return on investment is clearly there. And so, uh, and so this clearly gets back to the fact that you have to have a, a very well-defined, clearly, clearly defined target customer, right? Or target set of customers, because otherwise you can't really go, you can't really be that targeted with your sponsorship if you're not that targeted with your customers. Correct. I mean, it's really about knowing your customer really well first. So I, where I see um, organizations get in trouble, for example, I, what I call a hobby sponsorship, you mm -hmm. might have a CEO who really loves to play golf. Right. And so he or she will then engage a golf property in a sponsorship, uh, very expensive. But if golf doesn't align with the customers of, of the sponsor, It'll have no impact on sales of the company. Might make the CEO feel good, uh, but it really won't impact the bottom line very much. So, if you were to, if you were advising somebody who wanted to dip their toe in the sponsorship uh, in the sponsorship market, what would be some first steps? Yeah. So, first step again, we mentioned that the importance of knowing your own customer base. Yeah. To really understanding not only the demographic of it, but the psychographics behind your audience. So. What do they like to do? What do they value? What do they do with their spare time? Uh, how do they relate to music and how do they relate to culture? And so you really got to start with a deep understanding of your customer. Then it's finding that property that aligns with that. Who speaks to that same customer base? So for example, if you're, if you're a brand and your customers really love camping, mm -hmm. you're going to engage with a property that really caters to the camping market. One example would be NASCAR, uh, right. where a lot of the fans uh, camp during, during events. Right. So understanding the demographic and psychographic of your audience is really, of your customer base is really important. Then it's a matter of scaling that sponsorship opportunity to your budget. And again, it is not one size fits all. There are sure. $10,000 sponsorships and there are $10 million sponsorships. Mm -hmm. So it's really understanding kind of the budget that you have to work with and then the goals that you want to attain. Do you want to improve your brand image? Do you want to Im impact the sales pipeline and really create more leads or create more qualified leads or in the end drive sales directly? So it's understanding those goals that are, that are really important. But again, it is not one size fits all. Mm -hmm. So there's a sponsorship out there for virtually any company that really wants to do that. Yeah, so it's interesting, like the example you gave earlier with the private jets and the and the NASCAR, I mean, they were getting to talk directly to pros, prospective customers, right? There was a exactly. captive audience. There's um, a captive audience. You're there day in and day out talking about jets and racing. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's not a bad job. No. Uh, and and then, but in other cases, then it's, um, it may be a little, as you say, maybe it's brand awareness. Maybe you do, as you say, with the, with the local not-for-profit or charity because you want to just improve your brand awareness in the community. Absolutely. And we're seeing that a lot uh, recently in terms of companies wanting to be known for their engagement with community. Mm -hmm. Sponsorship is clearly a way to demonstrate that because you are front and center, not only uh, with the property that you're sponsoring, but with the community and showing benefit and showing that, you know, from a CSR perspective, a corporate social responsibility, mm -hmm. When rubber hits the road, you're living by your ethics, you're living by your principles. And a sponsorship is a vehicle to help you do that. And then when you work with, uh, with companies, I mean, when you work with the you know, companies who want to do sponsorship and that, um, the people that they want to sponsor, I mean, do you say, let's take the not-for-profit again um, as an example. Uh, they have to be obviously forthcoming with the type of people they engage with and, and they have to supply some information from that side. Is that ever an issue or are most people like pretty open with that because they're going to get money in return? No, it's an issue and it should be an issue from both mm -hmm. sides. So let's just say in a not-for-profit sponsorship area, the not-for-profit, what we call the property, should have a policy. 
what kind of companies do they want to align with? What comp- yeah. kind of companies do they not? And the same goes for the sponsor. What not-for-profit, what cause really resonates with them uh, from an ethics perspective that their, their customers would align with? Both have to go in clear-eyed about what makes sense. So that's kind of the starting point with any kind of not-for-profit sponsorship because they have to see eye to eye on this in order for the sponsorship to be successful. Mm-hmm. And then just how, how do you manage to uh, manage expectations, if you like, because you know, maybe if somebody goes, does sponsorship for the first time, how do you manage their expectations and what the return is going to be and how quick that return is going to be? Yeah, that's a great question. And there's a couple of things to keep in mind. One, first of all, sponsorship is not an instant on, instant mm-hmm. off. If yeah. you do a social media campaign or a digital campaign, you're going to know the open rate, the click rate. You're going to, you're going to know everything really pretty much within minutes of your campaign. Some sponsorship takes months, even years to yield the results because it's about relationship. It's about the work within the relationship. So the, the, the harvest from it sometimes takes um, a long time for it to, to come to pass. The, the second thing that you really have to keep in mind is that you go in with specific expectations of what are the goals that you want to achieve and you build a plan to attain it. So it is not just set it and forget it. It is, mm-hmm. here's, here's the plan. I'm sitting down, both sponsor and property, you're sitting down and being very exact about what goals do I want to attain, and here's the plan that we're going to do to attain it. So those two things, not a short-term operation and having a clear strategy and a clear plan to, to attain what you want from it. And obviously then... Uh part of that is understanding that it's a difference between sponsorship and advertising, right? Exactly. So av- advertising is really, you're just communicating a message and you hope that it connects. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's really it. <laughs> the, the, spot, the difference is the sponsorship is about the relationship, but that's where the power of sponsorship comes because if that relationship makes sense, you have all kinds of benefits like image transfer and such, which uh, advertising really doesn't do because mm-hmm. right now, especially in, in, in these times, Consumers have their guard up for advertising. They mm-hmm. are expecting a commercial message, right? right? So they're very skeptical going in. But if you're a sponsor and you're a part of a property, if you're, if you're in an, at an event, for example, let's take the San Diego Padres again. Mm-hmm. You're, you're not, you don't have your guard up for a commercial message. You're at a ball game and enjoying a leisurely afternoon with your family. So you are more inclined to believe and to integrate the sponsor message and believe it and act on it by purchasing the sponsor's product than other than with advertising. Yeah. And hopefully we'll, we'll see people back enjoying baseball again now, because it's probably quite a cheap sponsorship right now, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, but it's also obviously then it's in, in advertising, it's, it's pretty transactional, right? It's like, you know, I pay to advertise and the way we go, as you said, with sponsorship, then both sides are sitting down and planning out and making sure that both sides are getting something from this, right? Instead, right. of just, instead of just selling like a, a space on the wall for, for two weeks. No, that's exactly right. Because, you know, now with media buying and advertising, you'll buy gross rating points or something of that mm-hmm. matter. You're, it is super transactional. You pay the money and you have an expectation in terms of performance. With sponsorship, it is much more subjective and much more capable of going wrong if that plan is wrong, if the plan is poorly implemented. But again, um, with greater risk comes greater reward. So that's sure. why we see such great ROI on sponsorship. Yeah. And what are, um, what are some examples you could give just uh, um, recently of like really fantastic uh, sponsorships that have just have been great matches? Maybe ones that even surprised you how well, how well matched they ended up being. Yeah, I don't know how recent they are, but some of my favorite stories include um, Firestone, for example. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember the, uh, the rollover issue with the Ford Explorer and how yes, it, I do, I do. Mm-hmm. It, the question was, was it the car or the tire? Um, mm-hmm. Both Ford and Firestone were hurt, hurt in that and all that. One of the things that Firestone did after the fact was it doubled down on its sponsorship of IndyCar racing. It became the exclusive tire of IndyCar racing from a, both from a supplier perspective and a sponsor perspective, because they believed that if a, if an IndyCar could go 200 miles an hour on Firestone tires, right. they were safe, reliable, and consistent. And mm-hmm. if an IndyCar driver staked his life on the safety of those tires, 
then you as a consumer can do that. It was spectacularly successful for Firestone right. and really led, led its um, re-entry back into the consumer market uh, post that the, uh, the Ford Explorer rollover issue. So that's one of my favorite stories about the power of sponsorship because, again, that image transfer works so well about safety, reliability, and consistency. Mm-hmm. So, again, that's an image story. I mentioned the uh, 32 to 1 ROI from a B2B uh, perspective for that uh, private jet manufacturer. Yeah. Well, there are there's some great stories about uh, organizations really ringing the bell with sponsorship if done right. Right. And then just from a, a, a much smaller, you know, maybe a more contained, do you have an example of maybe a small company who did a sponsorship that, that uh, worked out really well? Yeah, there are always examples of that. I I, I tend to think that, uh, for example, a lot of the banking um, sponsorships done on a community basis uh, are really successful. Um, You see a lot of the banks and communities sponsor youth soccer, uh, Little League, things of that nature. And again, they integrate with everything from um, team accounts. So if you're a team mom or a team dad and you're you're uh, keeping the bank account for your soccer team you're opening that account at the sponsor bank yeah. um and again you're more likely to do your banking at that sponsor bank because again they supported your child's little league or youth right. soccer team so you see that's why you see a lot of the a lot of the banks uh, do sponsorship on a local level because it's so successful for them and then just, uh, you know, as we start to come out of this crisis, um, what, what's your advice to companies in terms of looking at how sponsorship may actually be a great vehicle for them to, to maybe get their name out there again, maybe, maybe try something different than they have before? Yeah, there's a couple things. One, it's, um, there was never a need uh, for companies to not only be perceived, but to really give back. Mm -hmm. And so sponsorship has become a vehicle to do that. And one of the interesting vehicles has become digital, obviously, because it's so difficult for us to be face to face, impossible in some cases. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're seeing sponsorship combined with digital being a really powerful vehicle to to promote uh, the things that they're doing to help their communities the things they're doing to help their consumers during these tough times when people lose their jobs and all those things. We see so many companies get, getting consumer forward with sponsorship, using digital as the vehicle to deliver it. Um, it's really an interesting time. And I think it's going to change the way that we do business well beyond when this crisis fades. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. I, I think absolutely. And I think people are going to, um, it's like that thing, you know, judging people by their friends, right? Um, I think, in many ways, I think, uh, you know, people will judge companies by the company they keep. Yeah, no, sense. you're exactly right. Yeah. And another expression is, um, you know, it matters who you stand on stage with. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you saw like right out of the bat, right, right out of the box, you saw Anheuser-Busch um, come out with their one team campaign, which is both advertising and sponsorship where they're um, converting their operations to the creation of hand sanitizer and they're supporting first responders Mm -hmm. and all these things from just a support and sponsorship perspective um, branded as one team that we are all one team. Um, Some spectacular things are happening right now. Yeah. Yeah. Those Clydesdales are, uh, they're clever horses. (laughs) <laughs> they, they have been for a long time right <laughs> yeah, exactly well listen ken this has been great uh, all of ken's information learn more about ken and about uh, charge would be in the contributor bio but before we go please do ken tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company sure we are a sponsorship marketing agency we help both, both sponsors and properties get the most out of the sponsorship experience and attain their business goals uh, you can find out more about us at uh, www.chargesponsorship.com. And uh, there's a variety of free resources about how to get started in sponsorship in our insights page. So just check us out uh, and uh, pl- please uh, give sponsorship a look. We think it's a, a great tool for marketers. Yeah, and I absolutely think coming out of this is everybody needs to reconsider everything and start looking at uh, at different ways of doing things. So please do check out uh, Can and Charge and look at maybe sponsorship is in your is in your future. Again, listen, great. Thank you very much, Ken. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.